we're going. Hi. Hi, it's been a while. Hi, it has been a while. Do we want to explain? Yeah, we can explain. I was very depressed. I was too. And <laughs> mental health comes first. I it was making me anxious because I'm such a perfectionist. Mm. And I, I don't mind like skipping an episode if something comes up life-wise. Yeah. But we're only two in. And I was like, this looks so unprofessional, blah, blah, blah. I know. And I was so but... mad at myself. Gabby literally came over, like fully ready to record, makeup, hair. And I opened the door and I was like, I can't do it. And Gabby was just like... Let's go chill instead. We had a fun day regardless. We did. We had a fun day and I needed it. Yeah. So I'm trying to be less hard on myself. I think you should. But anyways, we're back. We're back. I would say that we are on our top A game today. I agree, actually. I think that time is going to make this episode even better than it would have been that day. And it's good to tease the audience. Be like, are we here? Are we not? Did we quit already? And the answer is no. And the answer is you can't get rid of us. <laughs> the internet's been trying to get rid of me for 10 years. <laughs> And I'm still here. <laughs> Honestly, that's admirable. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Gabby Sibaha. And I'm Rhea Carmona. And this is So True Bestie, the first podcast ever started by two best friends. You know what? We That's a trademark. I know. It's funny because it, we didn't talk about it. I know. Like we talked about using that yeah. in like as a joke in like the bio, but then it just kind of became our shtick. <laughs> I just hit my tooth. <laughs> You're right though. And I love that. I, I like agree. that it just came about organically. Well, because it's true, first off. I would say we're the least insufferable ones. I agree. And I, you that can... That has to count for something. You can call us haters. You can call us out, but you're not right. We are. Should we get into the in, yeah. <laughs> ins and outs? <laughs> uh, do you want to go first? I would love to. Let's do it. My f- Wait, should I do my in or out first? Mm. You pick. Let's start on a positive note. Do your in. My in is you. <gasps> my in is you. What? Because, okay, so I feel like I've been traveling a lot September and October and, yeah. all, and also extremely depressed. Yes. And you have just been there through it. And I feel like I haven't seen you a lot in the past like week. And that always makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. And I just love you. You're like my little ray of sunshine. Ray of sunshine? Yeah, a ray of sunshine. <laughs> Straight up. That's how I feel about you. Oh my God. I feel the same way. I've really missed you the past few weeks. I have felt lonely. <laughs> And I never feel like, like a, it's a, that's a thing I don't feel often. Yeah. I do not feel lonely that often. And I have been like really lonely without you the past <laughs> few weeks. I've been twiddling my thumbs thinking about when like, I'm going to hang out with you. Every time I post a story, I like watch it within 10 seconds. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I just want to know what you're up to. You know what I mean? Me too. I found myself like like looking up your tiktok being like what is this loca up to <laughs> because you know how it's like even with us who are like so close and so comfortable with each other it's like we do see each other so much so when you're like on vacation especially when you're with ryan you haven't seen him in a while it's like i know i'm never gonna annoy you but i also want to just like give you the time to do yeah. that you know what i mean or like yeah. when my dad was in town and you were like i just been wanting to give you your space and i think it's nice that we do that but also then i'm like fuck i just miss her i agree i like write things in my notes about what i want to tell you about yeah. the time i've been gone yeah so yeah you're definitely my in you're you're always my end, but especially this week, I think. <sighs> I love that. Oh, my God. Me and Rhea get into these things called obsessed phases. Yeah. And it's like we always love each other, but there's an obsessed phase means you extra love each other that yeah. week. And I'm in my obsessed phase with you right now. I'm definitely in an obsessed phase. Again, like you said, I think the distance makes the heart grow fonder. And I love that we're seeing each other today. It's Friday. Yeah. And we're seeing each other tomorrow. And we're seeing each other Sunday. And that's what and the heart I, needs. I could see you Monday and Tuesday. I could I could see you for the rest of my life. Throw a couple <laughs> extra days of the week there. <laughs> no, we're going to a movie. Oh, we are. Yeah. And you think I'm going to get tired? Absolutely not. Never. <laughs> and then my out is acne because I'm going through a bout of acne right now. Yeah. You can't see this cheek right now. And that's purposeful because I have so many fucking pimple stickers on. I have so much makeup on right now because I am... I tried tretinoin. If you don't know what that is, that's like a acne medicine. And it completely wrecked my skin. And now I'm suffering the consequences of it. Yeah. So yeah, that shit's out. I, you know what? It's one of those things where as much as we don't want to admit it, like certain physical things really matter and yeah. they really affect your day-to-day life. I think the two biggest for a lot of women are skin and hair. If I have a good hair day, it changes the day. If I have a bad hair day, I could have to be having the most beautiful face card day. If my hair looks flat or greasy, I'm not having a good day. That is so true. Hair is so important. And skin, arguably even more. Skin is probably the most important thing, I think, for women. For most people, but specifically for women. And you feel kind of like 
weird saying that it matters because you don't want to seem like vapid or whatever, but it matters so much. Dude, so much. When I was I was with Ryan this week and I was like really in front of people yeah, this right, week especially. Yeah. And I found myself having to put on makeup right when I woke up. I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. And I was like ex- extremely insecure. I'm feeling extremely insecure today and this entire week. And it also sucks because I'm such a self-proclaimed like skincare lover, yeah. skincare like guru. Yeah. And to not know why or how to fix this, it's pissing me off. It's so complicated. Yeah. Skincare is really, really yeah. complicated. And I think, you know, obviously it's great that there's so many options now and so many people on TikTok talking about what they use and their skincare routines, but it almost makes it harder. Yes. I was about to say, never take advice for your skin on TikTok unless it's your skin type. That's the thing. I honestly ignore people's skincare routines or like this is the order I do it because skin is so unique yeah you know what I mean I used to like watch nose contour videos all the time before my nose job because I was like wanting to figure out the perfect but then I started to realize like nose contouring is so specific because everybody's nose is shaped differently in the same way that skin it's like somebody might be using something that would just absolutely wreck my skin and you actually have historically had really good skin I know like I've seen at the most maybe three pimples on you at a time and right now, I showed you the before picture. Like you said, it's like a full-on cystic, cystic breakout. Yeah. I've never seen that on yeah. you before. So I'm going through it, but I know that it'll pass. So it will pass. whatever. Yeah. What are yours? You look like a beautiful ballerina today. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, You're giving. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a very, very hot take. Okay. <laughs> My in is cable TV. <laughs> I'm serious. Fuck streaming services. Okay. I feel like I've been duped. And I have a bone to pick. Tell us. Cable TV reigned supreme for years, right? We all had cable TV. We had TV Guide, whatever. And then streaming services came out. And it was like, look at us. You don't need cable TV anymore. We have better programs. We're cheaper. It's $5.99 a month. And you get all this. Everybody in the world canceled cable TV and started getting streaming services. But then they started taking a few of your favorite shows and throwing them on a different streaming service and throwing a few on this different streaming service. And then they started raising the price of each of those streaming services. And now the average person pays around $70 a month for all of their streaming services. They've sneakily started putting ads in those streaming services. So now we're paying $70 a month for multiple different channels and we're watching ads. They have literally just stolen cable tv and then rebranded it and are selling us the exact same thing for more money that is so true and it's so such bullshit and i feel fucking duped that they did that literally this is just this is capitalism and it's just netflix and fuck netflix and fuck netflix and also fuck netflix for not only all of that but then also like not even paying their actors and their producers and the people that they're buying these shows from enough it's like capitalism sometimes is just stealing an idea and then selling it to people as something else and then once people can't live without it making it the exact same idea they stole except for more money yep and it's bullshit and i'm so upset i was watching a show last night i don't remember on what streaming service and the ad break was like 170 minutes long sorry (laughs) seconds seconds what it it literally, seconds? Like, you know the little circle in the corner 170 seconds i can't believe it and honestly i kind of miss cable tv i kind of miss not being able to fully choose what i want to watch yes and just kind of having to look through and be like oh i haven't seen that movie in a long time that'd be fun to watch i'm actually sick of the paradox of choice i am too yes yeah. that's what actually yeah out is the paradox of choice yes. i'm over it <laughs> i don't want so many options anymore yes give me 10 options and i have to pick between that's them. very american isn't it to have so many choices it but is. it's not really good for the brain it's really not and i'm having a hard time or so. the wallet anyways my end is cable tv bring it back Bring it back. Run it back. Run it back. This episode is sponsored by cable TV. <laughs> <laughs> What's your in? Out. Oh, my out. Oh, you're out. This is not a hot take. <laughs> the mood just got darker. <laughs> it's because I'm dealing with it too. My out is about me. Okay. My out is canker sores. <gasps> no. <sighs> Look at this bitch. Oh, no. Does it hurt? It hurts like a motherfucker. <gasps> I didn't even know. It hurts so bad. I hate canker sores. Everybody hates canker sores. This isn't like something insane that I'm saying but they're so annoying and I was thinking about it if I had the ability to like wish things that would come true on my enemies but I didn't want to actually like you know I didn't want their like mom to die or for them to like get in a horrific car accident 
I would just wish for them to always have a canker sore. <gasps> That's so true. Imagine. How if long you, do they take to get rid of? A long ass time. I've had this for like a week. It's only getting worse. Can you kiss? I can kiss, but like I definitely will not make out. <gasps> And even talking right now, it hurts a lot and eating is terrible. And it's the worst when you're eating something that's really good and you just want to like indulge and like shove it in your mouth and you can't because every few bites, it just hurts so bad. How does they happen? Are you stressed? I think I read that they can happen if you have too much like bad food, like if you have too much sugar or too much salt or anything like yeah. that. I don't get them super often, but it is wrecking my week. In Spanish culture um a canker sore happens if your stomach is hot so you've been eating a lot of hot or bad food interesting i don't think i've ever had a canker sore wow that is count your lucky stars (laughs) because i'm having a bad time uh anyways let's get into the cheeky little episode yeah you want to describe what we're talking about today? yeah so today we are going to be getting into i don't know how to say this in a way that doesn't sound so millennial core but i'm just going to say it following your dreams i guess um taking chances on yourself Um, imposter syndrome imposter syndrome I feel like work and money and you know quitting your job to follow your dreams and stuff like that and it may be like not always working out perfectly isn't talked about a lot yep especially online and especially online when it comes to like influencers and stuff everything seems perfect and it's very like glamorized to like quit your job and or to be an artist and it's actually really fucking hard and scary and so I thought it would be good to talk about especially with you specifically and kind of like your journey over the past year I would love to and I think that we both have a unique perspective where you're very much a per- I was thinking about this on the car right here you're like a lightning bolt you like you can get insecure but one thing you are not insecure about is business no yeah not at all you're very much like a you don't even give yourself a chance to feel the insecurity even if you do feel it you're like already working on it yeah you're like fuck those thoughts I'm gonna focus on this because this is what I want to do and I'm very much the opposite of that Mm -hmm. and I just think that we have a cool perspective on both sides of the coin where it's like you already have a business you have multiple businesses you've been working for yourself for as long as i've known you i recently got out of corporate world Woo! (sighs) honestly a year from like this week i think really yeah wow good timing for the episode i know so it's an interesting our both of our trajectories are so different yeah i feel like that's so kiki bobo of us what's it called (laughs) wait I remember you got pissed at me when I sent you I didn't get pissed at you I got pissed at the world I was like damn I just want to know if I was Kiki or Bobo it's so funny because I told that story literally yesterday somebody was like are you Kiki or Bobo and I was like yo Gabby hit me with this and it was like not the day because it was also the day that somebody was like are you this or that are you an ENTFJ what's your rising I remember I'm like I'm tired of boxes I remember I was like just kicking my feet up on my bed my edible was hitting I'm like are you Kiki or Bobo I get a voice memo a voice recording back or just full-on rant I was like about like putting yourself in boxes she's like can you just tell me if you're Kiki or Bobo I do think you're Kiki and I'm Bobo uh, yeah that person was immediately like you're very Kiki yeah yeah (laughs) and I'm Bobo um so I think I'll start with kind of like my journey a little. I'm going to do the cliff notes because it's very long. But mm. essentially, and I think this is, a, you kind of just said this, but it's like in LA, I think sometimes not only is having a day job frowned upon, but also I think being successful in waves, mm-hmm. people don't talk about that. People only talk about the highs when in reality there are highs and lows. Like people are always like, oh, you've been like an, an influencer. Or you've created content for 10 years. And technically that's true, but I've not always lived off of it. Yeah. I have at times lived with you and struggled to pay rent, pay Mm -hmm. my part of the rent off of, you know, whatever it was, YouTube or Instagram. And I've had lots of jobs in between. And I've always kind of like still had Instagram and stuff, but I've had to also do other things to make ends meet. Um, And for me, I think I always still wanted to be in something creative And I'm very lucky that that always worked out for me. Mm -hmm. So I worked at Playboy for years. And while I was doing that, I was still doing, um, you know, content creation and stuff like that. But I had a full time big boy corporate nine to five. I was nine to five at a corporate building. I had a key card to get in and, you know, a gym membership with my corporate job and health insurance. And honestly, it was lovely. Like it was really nice having that security was it what I wanted to do is it like fun having a boss and having to answer to people and like go to HR and be careful about what you post online of course not but 
there is a sense of security that's really nice. And I think most people have to have that while they work on their passions at the same time. Like not everybody has money from the magic money fairy or from mom and dad and they can just like live in a cute apartment and work on their hopes and dreams and not have to like worry about how they're going to pay rent which by the way like if that is you good for you yes like that's amazing that's, that's what so we sick. want obviously as a yeah. as a society it would be so nice to be able to have like you know a family that had enough money that they could just like fund my dreams and that I could focus on that and that they believed in me enough to do that or yes. had enough money you know yes um, most of us don't, but have that's that. just not reality. It's not reality. And most of us have had to juggle both. Um, and so I worked at Playboy for years. I loved it. Not only did it give me income to be able to pay my bills, um, and you know, make me feel secure, but it also taught me a lot about business. And yes. I think that's an important thing too. Like I feel like so much of my trajectory once I quit to do my own thing was pushed because of the things that I learned working in corporate. I agree. It's not enough to start your own business just because you're creative. You have to be good at business. Yeah. You have to be willing to learn. Yes. And you have to be willing to, like, for lack of a better term, eat shit. You have to be willing to have bosses who don't give a fuck about you and have people telling you what to do and doing the grunt work and being an assistant. And that's too, I think there's this idea in LA that, like, starting from the bottom is, like, glamorized and people have to say like oh I started from the bottom and like you know whatever I had to work my way up but nobody actually like posts about that in fact I know people who are technically like assistants or they're like you know working for other people and stuff like that and they only post the cool stuff and then they will literally like hide tagged photos and hide stuff of them having to like that shows that maybe they're like not really at that level and it's like why are we so embarrassed to be like I'm starting from scratch but and then and in the same vein applauding ourselves for starting from scratch like right you you want that you want to start from the bottom but you don't want to show the bottom you You want the story yeah you want once you're successful to be able to say you started from the bottom yeah but you're embarrassed to show it right now and that is so I think dangerous for people who move to a big city and they're creative and they have these big dreams and then they get so down on themselves when it doesn't like happen immediately or when that success doesn't come quickly or when they learn that like starting from the bottom really genuinely means starting from the bottom and it's not fun and you're going to have to get coffees and you're going to have to do paperwork and make dunch, photocopies, make photocopies and, you know, fucking post on Instagram or follow after an influencer who hasn't posted about the brand you're working for and do the annoying things. Yeah. But to circle back, that's the stuff that makes you better when you do branch off on your own. I completely agree. I personally think that everybody, even outside of office work, should be a waiter at one point in their life. I think that that teaches you like humility and it teaches you to problem solve and it teaches you to act quickly. And I can all, I can actually always tell when somebody has had a service job. Yes. Based on how they treat Ab- others. Absolutely. And I think here, like in Los Angeles, you're right. I I started out as, as a waitress at a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Then I worked at Wells Fargo. Yeah. And then I got into like social media, working for skincare and stuff. And I feel like people... If you say here that you have like a boring job like that, they're like, oh, whatever. Like, I don't really care about you. And that is so shitty because you didn't ask me about what I want to do. You didn't ask me my creative, like what I've been working on creatively lately. And I think that that may be why people get embarrassed because they don't want to be known for the work that they're doing right now. They want to be known for what they're going to be or what their plans are to achieve that dream. Yeah. Well, I also think, you know, it's important to kind of like own what you're doing in the moment, but I also think it's okay to lead with what you want to do. Exactly. I think a lot of times people have a hard time owning the things they want to do if they don't have like something to show for it, quote unquote. Yes. And, you know, it's hard for somebody who like, let's say, for example, wants to work in music to say I'm a musician if they don't like have an EP out or something. And it's like, it's okay to say I'm a musician. Um, I don't have anything out yet. I'm actually working at a restaurant right now trying to, you know, get the funds to get that produced, but I'm a musician. That's okay. It's okay to say I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I 
you know, make ceramics, I make candles, I make jewelry, whatever it is, even if you aren't living off of it, you're allowed to like, that's such a great point. You're allowed to say what you are, what you want to be. If you, even if you have nothing to show for it yet. Yes. Yes. And people feel like they can't have these titles unless they're successful. And that's just not true. Or unless somebody has told them that they are this thing. Yeah. Like they wait for somebody to give them that validation that they are actually that thing when you know what you are. Yeah. And I will say, I'll give myself props. You're right. I feel like I've always been pretty good at like being very confident in business. Yes. To the point where I've actually told people that I do things that I don't do. Yeah. Like I remember when I first applied for the job at Playboy, it was for a producer role for social media. Well, by the way, you didn't just apply. You went to the offices and you were like, you you finessed your way into there. I snuck into the office. I told them I was there to have a meeting with John didn't know a John I don't think a John worked there um but I look unassuming you know that's sort of a privilege I look unassuming I'm small people don't think I'm gonna like I'm a danger yeah they let me up to the building and the building was actually really secure not only did you have to get let up by security but once you were on Playboy's floor you still needed a key card to get in so I just loitered until somebody went out for like their lunch break and then I went in and I happened to have a really really nice receptionist who I basically told her that I had snuck in and I had my resume printed on a piece of paper in a manila folder like it was 1996 and I basically was like you know I'm just I just wanted to give you this if you wouldn't mind floating it to the right people it's okay if you throw it in the trash when I leave and that takes guts Rhea like honestly you were what like 26 25 no I was like 22 23 I was young to have that and to have that like the the confidence to do that you just like skimmed past that but I remember being like hell yeah that's so sick and you know what I think it worked in my favor because I remember when I got that call they like loved this they were like you're the one who snuck in yes they loved that they thought it was really cool so yeah you know it's like I took the chance on myself and I did that the worst they could have said is no and you knew that yeah even then they probably wouldn't have said no they probably would have said yes and then just thrown in the trash can when I left and I would have just assumed that the position was filled yeah um but I remember that I left that day after sneaking in and the receptionist was nice but she was also just like you know okay and I left and for like the two weeks before I actually even got a call whenever somebody would ask what I did I'd said I, I said I was a producer at Playboy I hadn't even gotten a call back yet. I just snuck in, but I wanted it so bad. And I felt so surely that that it was yours, that it was mine. And what's the worst thing that happens if it's not when people ask if you still work at play, well, you just say no, who cares? Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'll fudge a little. Yeah. That's what life is about. I like that about you. Actually. I I like, like I love, I am a huge advocate for faking it until you make it. Yeah. I am a huge advocate, but you are, your proof that like it does work it does it yeah. genuinely does and I'm not yeah. even that big you know this I'm not a huge like manifester girly or you know believe that if you like but light, light a candle on the full moon that shit will come to you but there is some sort of confidence that is instilled in you when you start to just like almost believe your own delusions that they do become real dude yes I'm going what you went through at 23 I'm going through right now at 29 yeah <laughs> which is crazy there's a timeline exactly but like it is true like if you change your perspective on a situation you you, your brain will always believe you before it believes the actual thing yes yes and that's the power of it and there is something about that energy that works it does and I will say that has to be paired with hard work right oh I agree there are a lot of people who think that it only takes confidence that's my qualm with manifesting actually like people that just ask for something and then they're like okay well I asked for it it's gonna come to me exactly that's just not how life works sit back and relax and it's like there is a there's there's a 50 50 thing with that and 50 percent of it is the energy and the confidence and believing in yourself and really imagining yourself but then the other half of it is like working toward that yeah and you have to be able to do both yeah I agree so so now after you've done you know the social stuff and working with an agency and playboy and stuff like how how do you what would you say you are now um well it's so funny because even then it's like I I moved to LA originally to like be a writer and 
then, you know, I got the job at Playboy and I really learned how much I love um, creative directing and producing and doing shoots. But I also learned that I loved um, sex education. And I ended up actually quitting Playboy to start Was That Good For You, which was my first podcast. That was great. And I did four seasons of it and I loved it. And I became certified as a sex educator over COVID. Completely changed my life. But I had no idea I wanted to do that until I worked at Playboy. And then doing that podcast, you know, made me realize I love doing podcasts. And that kind of led to this podcast. Um, But also doing that kind of led to me having more of a female audience and me starting to learn that I loved like aesthetics and that I love um making jewelry and then you got back into content creation I got too. back into content creation and then I started kind of like you know I became I think more my most authentic self online and I have a very I think specific aesthetic and thing that, that I like and I noticed that other people liked that about me and so I started you know posting about how I love like thrifting and going to estate sales and making jewelry and then people liked that jewelry and now it's like I have a podcast with my best friend and I make jewelry but both of those two things weren't even close to being on my fucking radar when I first moved to LA and if I didn't work at Playboy it wouldn't have led to me realizing I like sex education which led to one podcast which led to the other and if I didn't realize that I liked you know creative directing then I wouldn't have started like posting aesthetic stuff on social media which would have led to me like making the jewelry but I think that that's the fun thing about living in a big city I think that like um sometimes when you live in a smaller city you don't get those chances to like actually think about what you want out of life yeah and I think like a place here I decided two years ago I was gonna be a creative director I've already shot a music video yes like I've already done like a brand rollout like you, you kind of get the opportunity here. You kind of get the upper hand to just try whatever you want to try. Yeah. And nobody judges you for it. And I think that that's the beauty of being in a big city. Like I could be, I could say I want to be an actress tomorrow and all my friends would be like, fuck yeah, like yeah. do it. Like, and your actor friends would rally around you and they yes. would show you how to do self tapes. Yes. That is like one that. thing that I love about living here. I think that you have to be a person who's kind of delusional and kind of like into yourself to live here yes absolutely it's or true. else you don't make it no it's true there whatever is, it is there is an aspect and I always say this there's an aspect of everybody who lives in a big city believes on some level even if you don't want to admit it that you were too good too good for oh the place I admit you were it born. Yeah. I admit it yes absolutely <laughs> that's okay yeah it's okay to believe that it's okay to believe that you are bigger than where you come from I agree and I always think about that with like artists like a Harry Styles or a Taylor Swift there has to be a level of I'm the shit to get to that level. Yes. And I fully respect that. I respect it too. We wouldn't have artists and we wouldn't have the Beatles stuff. We wouldn't have the Beatles. Um, but it's, it's so funny how you move here for one thing. And then that kind of molds as you have these other experiences because you have the same thing. Yeah. When I first met you, you were like writing acoustic songs. On yeah. Your guitar. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be like a songwriter. Like I was working on a poetry book. Yeah. Um, and I think and then after that, I was like, oh, I should get into content creation. And then after that, I was like a Wells Fargo employee. And like, I, I don't know, I was like, should I go the corporate route or whatever? And then I went into like more social media. And then I worked at like Unilever, which is like yeah. the biggest like conglomerate of brands ever. Yeah. And now I'm doing like my own business, creative direction and stuff. So you're so right. I feel like a lot of the time I've been really hard on myself for being a jack of all trades master to none yeah what's the what's the second part of that quote jack of all trades master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one which there you is go. low key a slay that is, that is <laughs> low key whoever said that is low key slay like i'd rather i'd rather be very good at a lot of different things than excellent at one yeah. because i feel like when you become just one thing that's you and I think something cool about living here is that you are allowed to be a jack of all trades. Yeah. You and I very much are. Yeah. And that allows us the experience to wake up one day and be like, oh, we want to try this. Yeah. And it also, I think, allows you to understand that it's OK to do something for a season versus, you know, I think it's harder maybe if you've spent 10 years in school and you have hundreds of thousand dollars of, you know, student debt. And not to say that those things aren't like righteous and important. Like obviously we need doctors yeah. and teachers and things like that. But it took me a really long time to unlearn that like whatever you decide you want to do when you're 18 and that you like put your, you know, money and school and tuition into is what you have to do forever. And this idea that like at 27, at 28, at 29, you can be like, actually, I think I want to try doing this instead. Yeah, I think I had a moment 
like in 2020 when COVID hit that I was like, I actually want to change the entire trajectory of my life. And I feel like that's first off so scary. Yeah. Um, to be com- to be to go from being comfortable to the uncomfortable to kind of like starting over and being like a student in life rather than like I honestly I do pride myself in being really good at social media for brands. Yeah. So to be an a top level of that and then immediately go down and not know um, how to do the thing that I want to do next was so humbling. But one of the best experiences I've ever had. Well, it's also really brave. Like it's brave to say, okay, I have mastered this craft. I'm good at it. I'm being rewarded for it. You were making the most money you would ever made. And to say, but I'm not feeling entirely fed. Let's start over. Yeah. Let's go back to the drawing board. That is so me. And I'm sure that's so you. Like to not feel fully fulfilled and be like, okay, I'm done with this. Yeah. That's why we moved here. That's why, you know relationships haven't worked out in the past or jobs or anything you kind of have to have that within yourself to really get the most out of life I think yeah I think so too and the thing is too I think you can get I am a firm believer for the most part you can get good at anything I agree I think consistency and practice yeah there I think there is this idea that you have to like be some sort of like child prodigy to you know do something and that's just not true like you can practice every day and get good. If I wanted to, I probably couldn't become like the next Adele. But if I wanted to like start a band and be like, you know, get singing lessons and like work really hard and like learn how to play the guitar. I'm not saying that I'd become a pop star, but could I do it? I agree. Would I have a couple of fans? Would it be fun? And like, you know what I mean? Could I play a couple small shows? Yeah, you can do anything if you really, really, really want to. Anything that you water, and this is going to sound like a fortune cookie, but I really believe it. Anything you water it just grows. Absolutely. Anything. I have a, such a toxic trait where I'm like, with a little bit of practice, I could, I can do anything. That's not a toxic trait. But it's a little delusional. That's, but like you said, we need you need yeah, that. You yeah. need a little delusion yeah. in life. Like if I started today... I think I could get really good at jump rope and I would compete in something next year. I believe year. in you. Kiki I believe Palmer in you. Ass. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> Great movie. Um, but no, I, I actually think it's true. And I think you, but you need to be a little delusionally confident, especially in a city like LA or yeah. New York where genuinely every, but there is always going to be somebody better than you at it. There is. That's the truth. There is always going to be somebody better than you. There's going to be a you, but stronger. That's what I think is why a lot of people leave is I think a lot of times people are the best at what they do in a smaller town. And then they are so humbled when they come to a big city. Yeah. You do have to kill your ego a bit. Oh yeah. Because nobody gives a shit. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's trying. And guess what? Everybody's just as good as you. That is so true. This town is full of like, Hey, look at me's. We're all looking at everybody. Yeah. And also every everybody's like a lot of people are talented. Like there are a lot of talented people. And I think it is humbling to be like I am one in a sea of many. And that doesn't mean you can't be successful. And that doesn't mean you can't be happy and fulfilled. But it also doesn't mean you need to be like the absolute best. I agree. Or that you need to become a millionaire off yeah. of it. And that's one thing too I think I've learned is redefining my definition of success. Because I think that there's this idea of success, especially when you're younger, that is like, I have to be the most famous. I have to be the best. I have to be a millionaire. It's like, if I can make six figures a year off of my jewelry, if I can make enough to pay my mortgage and be happy, and if I decide to have a child, give them a good life, that's success. Yeah. That's huge success. My if level- I can start a business in a sea of a million jewelry businesses and thrive enough to live off of, that is massive success to me it doesn't mean I need to be M jewelers or that I need to be you know what I mean have like three four storefronts on sunset if I can live off of something to me that's fucking success and everything else is just an added bonus exactly I used to be a person that was like I have to be Forbes 30 under 30 right remember that yes and and then I thought about it when I was like 28 and I was like, why do, why do I need that? Why is that the caliber of like my, why, why does that equal my success? Like, first off, you have to pay to be on Forbes 30 under yeah. 30. It's all fake. It's all smoke and mirrors. It, it doesn't mean what we think it means. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like for me, actually, I'm my own toughest competition. I'm like, who, how can I be a better version of me? Like, I've never looked at somebody and been like, that's my competition I've just been like okay they're owning their shit how do I own my shit kind of thing and I think that that comes from like having people like you in my life having people like my 
my husband who was yeah. like in nine different bands yeah. and like is so creative my parents who like immigrated here and started their own businesses mm-hmm. like I've never been told that I can't do something and like I feel like a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. But if you don't have that, you have to be that for yourself. Yeah. And that's really, really hard. Which is such such a hurdle in itself. Yeah. Why do you think it's been like historically harder for you to put out your own creations or businesses or ideas? Well, actually, I kind of I kind of clocked myself the other day. I feel like I make a lot of excuses for why I am the way I am. You do. And I and I can I can blame a lot of shit on childhood trauma. I can blame a lot of shit on so much. And I have in the past, but you actually were somebody who was like, That's just an excuse. And I like I really love friendships and relationships that kind of put a mirror up to my own face because yeah. I feel like I'm always helping everybody that I never like that's a defense mechanism for me to not deal with myself sometimes mm-hmm. and I think that when you said that to me I was like oh shit she just called my ass out and she's right like it's what I, I like sat with the feeling of why you calling me out like made me a little uncomfortable and yeah. I was like that's for a reason because I'm bullshitting myself and she's the only one that can see that and I think that in the past I've blamed it on like the fear of being seen and childhood trauma. But at the end of the day, I was making excuses for myself because there's a bridge between having an idea and the execution. Yeah. And I'm not comfortable with the fact that my idea is so good in my head, but the execution isn't where I would need to be. Right. And I feel like I've just been like, that just looks too hard. You hold yourself to an extremely high standard. Yeah. Maybe higher than anybody I've ever met. You're very much a perfectionist for yourself. Yeah. And I think sometimes you're like, if this is not perfect, it's not worthy of being put into the world. Yeah. And I think I had a, this is funny. I think I had a moment. I recently saw a video where Blue Ivy was on tour with her mom. Yeah. Beyonce. And she started out dancing. She's on the whole tour and she has a section in the tour uh, in the set where she's dancing and I saw the first video the first time she ever did it and it wasn't good right she was a like kid. she's a kid she's yeah. like 12 and I then saw a video of one of the last performances she did she was so good yeah. she looked like she was a cheetah girl she was dancing she was cl- she was like so with it yeah and that's when I kind of realized that's when Blue Ivy taught me that consistency is key and anything <laughs> you water grows you know what? I love that. If it's Blue Ivy that does it for you, it's Blue <laughs> Ivy that does it for you. Like, yes, but I j- just I'm such a visual person and I'm like, how does how does this compete with this? Like, I, I want to know why things work. And I think that seeing that I was like, well, the time is going to pass anyways. I yeah. might as well put down my little seeds, water and and then reap the benefits of yeah. what I make as opposed to just stopping what I'm what I want to do because it's too hard. I also think there's something to be said about comparison, right? Like you're looking at Blue Ivy's first performance compared to her last and her last is so great that you realize how much she's come in that time. But the first time she came out, people were probably still like, oh my God, for a 10 year old, she is like an incredible dancer in the same way that like your first drop of candles will be good. But in 10 years, people will see what you're making then and be like, wow, do you remember like Gabby's first drop years ago? And like, but people aren't thinking that in your first drop you know what I mean they're not thinking that they're just like oh this is a cool new thing that's out yeah I think I had to learn to allow myself to not be perfect at something and to not be the best at something right when I first put it out because like me in two years is gonna be like I would have done this differently and stuff exactly but I can only perform at the level that me right now can perform exactly it's not like you never you didn't get your first iPhone and you were like "Mm, this this could have three cameras instead of one you know what I mean it's cool that we have that now but when that first came out we were all just like this is something exciting and new and cool and that's all it needs to be yeah we don't sit in the uncomfy as much as we should I feel like and we don't like allow ourselves to not be perfect at something and that's my that's my lesson of the season to just let things fucking rock yeah and also just like put things out there yeah if people don't fix like them it, later fix them later if people don't like it they won't buy it or I they agree. won't listen to it or they won't whatever but you'll always doing. find your niche huh because you will your thoughts like you can think that you have a brilliant idea but somebody else probably fucks with that too do you know how much ugly shit is out there ugly shit that I think is disgusting that you couldn't pay me to buy terrible music you I would rather listen to white noise but you know what some of those brands 
have millions of dollars a month in revenue. Some yeah, of those artists the audience is still there. are pulling, you know what I mean? Selling out arenas. It's not for me. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Who the fuck am I? Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody might not like something you put out. Then they're just not for you. Yeah. I recently saw something where it was like, you need to consume bad art in life. Your, your perspective of bad art, because that shows you your style that yeah. shows you how you want to personally express yourself exactly in the same way that you might see something and be like mm, i don't like that but like the way that they did this is really cool or the way did they did that and you can kind of like take that and apply it to your own things too yeah and i feel like sometimes i think about i was very corporate by the way i was like nine to five yeah. in the unilever machine yeah. working at like a top skincare brand and it took me a while to be like it's okay to be uncomfortable for a season if it means that you are going to come out of that a a new person or be like having learned anything in life. Well, that's the thing too. It's like you working at Unilever, you know, obviously wasn't your favorite thing you've ever done, but you would not have the marketing chops you have now. Oh, for sure. If it wasn't for it. I learned so much. And those marketing chops, once you're done making your art, are going to come in handy so much. I agree. And in the same way that like you know, I don't think I'd have like the eye for aesthetics I do or the ability to like create content around the things that I make if I hadn't spent time making things for other people. That didn't necessarily make me happy, but I would absolutely would not be where I am now without the lessons I learned doing those things. Oh, for sure. Those are invaluable lessons that I will never take for granted because like you do see a different side of business and you just take what what resonates with you yeah even in working in the service industry like knowing how to read people and to diffuse situations and to deal with difficult people and to have patience those lessons are so important even if you after you stop being a waiter you become fucking Basquiat like th that still matters yeah. working with difficult people being able to sell things all that stuff matters it doesn't matter what you do afterwards yeah it, it all it all ends up being an important part of the journey yeah there's no shame in being a student of life yeah. and seeing everything as like okay how can I get to the ne this next level that I want to and what can I learn from this level as opposed yeah. to just always thinking about the sunset that's coming you yeah. know like I feel like people need to be like more present and where they are in their journey currently yeah as opposed to like oh in like two years I'm gonna be a millionaire or like I just can't wait I can't wait like you need to wait so fucking make the most of your present moment yeah and also I think getting comfortable with failing yeah people are so terrified and embarrassed and ashamed of failing but everybody has failed at something before yeah everybody has failed at something yeah I think about like so I'm coming out with a business called big big smile and it's like a homeware but it's starting out as a candle lifestyle brand yeah and I came up with the idea in 2020 that's crazy to think about and it's almost 2024 so I always regret or quote-unquote regret the time that I didn't work on what I needed to work on yeah. when it came to big big but then I think about like that version of Gabby couldn't couldn't do what this version of Gabby can do. So Absolutely. it's like, it's okay to have those moments where like shit just didn't work out. Yeah. And other things did. Yeah. Like you, like you said, you directed a music video yeah. for a band that gets a million streams a month. Like, yeah. Yeah, maybe like Big Big took a little longer to come out, but you also have had like multiple life experiences since then and found other passions. Like I don't even think at that time you were like as passionate about creative directing and you definitely weren't thinking like I'm going to do music videos, but yeah. like that happened and now that's something else you do and something else that you enjoy doing. So it's like, and that, and those skills are going to work when you're making your first video content for Big Big once it is out. Like yeah. all of that stuff ends up like adding up. It's just like, I was telling Kellen this the other day because- you know, obviously being a musician, it's tough. Even if you have had success when you do a side project and it doesn't do that great or whatever, like that's the, those egos still hit. I'm sure Ryan deals with that too. Yeah. And I was like, nothing is make or break. Nothing is going to change your life and nothing is going to ruin your life. All of it are just puzzle pieces. Everything. Everything. Because Kellen can sometimes be really hard on himself too. And sometimes he thinks like, you know, if one thing didn't work out that it's over or if one opportunity comes, it's going to be the most incredible thing in his life. And I'm like, you're putting too much weight. It's in too all extreme. Of it. Too extreme on both sides. Everything is just building blocks to the larger, 
you know, grand scheme of things. Wow, that's such a good way to put it. Like everything is a form of self-expression. So you might as well exercise that part of you. Yeah, exactly. Everything is just another part of your life. 